Christians, they go through their lives walking and driving through this apparently solid world. That the only place this world, this reality exists in the form that we are experiencing it is in our heads. All of it. So if I um, come to this question, it's kind of the title of the video cast today. Uh, if a tree falls, does it make a noise? Well, the answer that seems strange, well, only if you hear it, is actually um, confirmation of what I'm saying here. Because when the tree falls, it doesn't make any noise. What happens is it creates, if you like, vibrational disturbances in the energetic field, in the air. And these disturbances are picked up by our ear, earring senses and turned into electrical signals, electrical information, which is then uh, communicated to the brain. And only in that part of the brain that specializes in decoding sound does that tree falling make a noise and even then only within a certain frequency band and all the senses are doing this the five senses they're taking um, electromagnetic waveform information uh, they're turning it into electrical signals, communicating that to the brain. And that's where the decoding goes on. That turns that information into sight, hearing, touch, smell, and so on. So we're living in a world which we think is solid, that we think is outside of us. And it's not, it's only in here. Another example. Here we have, uh, oh, don't go out on me. Uh, here we have a candle, candlelight. Okay, yeah, he's holding a candle. Well, actually, I'm only holding a candle in your head and in my head. Because what you're looking at in its prime state is an electromagnetic field pulsing at certain frequencies. It has no color, has none of the things that you see, but my sight senses take that information, communicate it to my brain in electrical signals, and in a small part of the back of the brain, which decodes visual reality, this appears to be in my hand when actually what I'm holding is an electromagnetic field and what's holding it, my hand, is an electromagnetic field. <sighs> Put the electromagnetic field out. So, how strange it is, but not really if you go deep in the rabbit hole, that this is not widely talked about widely um, debated upon so that we actually understand the reality that we are um, experiencing, which would mean we would live our lives in a different way from a different understanding and we would have the, uh, the knowledge to get past what appears to be constant walls of limitation and I can't and it can't be done and it's impossible. You look at those various things that we think are impossible, can't be done, and invariably the, the reason we perceive that is because the world is solid. The world is not solid. What the universe is and this is all provable fact, by the way, is um, information. 
think of, of Wi-Fi. You know, in this room now, um, if I had Wi-Fi, there would be an entire uh, global um, reality called the Internet, the World Wide Web, in this space, uh, apparent space, that I'm apparently occupying. But where would it be? Where's the Wi-Fi? And if, if computers didn't exist, and you said to someone, actually, in this, in this, uh, in this room, in this wherever you are, is um, a, a vast field of information uh, which you can tap into anywhere in the world um, and, and see um, this fantastic uh, collective global reality called the Internet. If people didn't realize that um, anything about computers, they would say you were mad. They'd say, what were you talking about? I can't see it. Where is it? Don't be stupid. But because we know about computers now and we know about Wi-Fi and all that stuff, when you say that to people, they say, yeah, Wi-Fi, I know about that. Yeah. Well, our reality is in so many ways the same. It's energetic information which um, we decode, a la the candle, etc., um, into an apparently physical reality that only exists in our head. And this is key to so much. What we are looking at with this these waveform fields of if you like I call it the cosmic internet the cosmic Wi-Fi um, is potential possibilities and probabilities um, waiting to be manifest and what we do is take probabilities and possibilities and decode them in the way I'm talking about into an experienced reality which we don't think we're in control of. And what makes us pull this possibility or probability into experienced reality, or this one, or this one, is our perceptions. Everything is perception. And therefore, if, for instance, you have a, what they call, a rational mind, a mind where um, it is rigid in its belief in reality, then that perception will, through this process I'm talking about, become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because you'll just keep pulling into uh, experienced reality what you believe reality is. So if you um, apply this to this global conspiracy for human enslavement. It is, in the name of one of my books, a perception deception. All our lives from cradle to grave, we are um, downloading from the system through education and science and um, medicine and, and all these things, media, we are downloading a, a version of reality, which I call the postage stamp consensus. And thus, because our perceptions dictate what we bring into apparently physical reality in here, what we bring into reality in here is in line with the postage stamp consensus, what people call normal. Um, and there's this idea, you see, that to understand reality in its deepest sense, you need a scientific mind. Ooh. No, you don't. Actually, that's the last thing you need. You don't need a scientific mind to understand reality. You need a free mind, which if we go on buying the version of reality that, that we get from cradle to grave through education and all these other sources. We don't have a free mind. We have a programmed mind playing out a programmed sense of reality. 
Um, and if you do that and you don't look into the, the true nature of reality, then so many things that are actually true you dismiss as crazy. See, one of the things that I, I get um, laughed at about, could give a shit, um, is that I talk about the fact that what is called shape shifting is possible and actually is happening in certain particular um, genetic lines. In other words, information lines. Uh, because, and it's understandable from the postage stamp consensus perspective, people say you can't shift from one kind of body to another. You can't go from one solid body to another solid body and back again. But you know something? No, you can't. I'll be the first one to say that. Of course you can't. But the body is not solid. It's an energetic field which we are also through, if you like, mind, manifesting as the illusory, physical, we think we are occupying. And so shape-shifting is not a solid body to a solid body, it's an energetic field to another energetic field. When we talk about hybrid bloodlines, what we're talking about really is hybrid information fields. And when you switch from one to the other, the observer creating the physical experience in their head apparently sees a solid body shift to another solid body. But that's not what hap what's happening. It's all where shape shifting takes place in terms of apparent solidity is in your head. And then, what people might say, again, it's completely understandable. Well, if, if everything's just energy and just information and not solid, then why can't I walk through this wall? Why, when I, I, I bang my uh, shin on, um, on a chair or something, why does it hurt? Well, this solid against solid illusion which you, you can't, one can't pass through the other. That is not solid against solid. That is an electromagnetic field of a certain type um, resisting an electromagnetic field of another type. And by the way, when you uh, bang your shin on the chair, you only say ouch when a signal has been sent from the point of impact to your brain and your brain decodes it into um, ouch. There are now um, methods of um, pain relief which actually work to block the signal from the point of um, the source of the pain from getting to the brain so it can't be decoded into pain. It's all um, an illusion. Um, what we are um, living in, and now more and more, at least cutting edge scientists with, with a, some kind of mind of their own, are now going down this road because it's so obvious. Um, we live in a holographic reality, which appears to be three dimensional, appears to be solid, as the best holograms are even what, what we make in this reality. Um, and those holograms are not outside of us. Those holograms are actually created by the brain from information received. Um, and it's been constructed, this reality. It's not happened by accident. I mean, I love it. The, the foundation of scientific orthodoxy is still that all this came by accident out of something they call the Big Bang. This, they say I'm freaking mad. This, we are told, is when everything was in a tiny, tiny speck 
what they call the singularity. And suddenly, boom, it exploded. And from this massive explosion came time, space, both illusions, by the way, time, space, planets, all of it, stars. As one critic of the Big Bang said, give me one free miracle and then I'll explain the rest. We live in a construct. And, and more and more people, even some in the mainstream now, increasingly in the mainstream, particularly in the areas of technology, are seeing that actually we live in some kind of simulation. We do. And that brings about something else. A simulation must have been created by some intelligence. And um, there was a NASA scientist recently uh, who came out and um, said that, in his opinion now, after looking at this years after year after year, um, we live in a digital hologram. And it is digital on one level, but in its prime state, it comes from waveform information, which we decode into the holographic um, reality. And talking of um, constructing, there are in excess of 200 different aspects of the, the solar system and reality as it works, which if they were just a fraction different to what they are, just a smear, none of this would exist. <laughs> Life as we know it wouldn't exist. Just a tiny difference. If the moon was just a bit further out or just a bit closer, life on Earth would be vastly different. And all this is an accident. As someone said, for all this to be an accident, is to believe that a hurricane could blow through a scrapyard and assemble a jumbo jet. It's ridiculous. And then you come to these two, well, beliefs that appear to define our reality. You know the reality in our head? And that's time and space. Neither of them are real. They're just part of the construct. You look into the night sky and, and you look at those stars, all those light years away and fantastic numbers of distance away. And oh, it's so massive. The only place that sky exists in the form that you're seeing it is in a tiny part of your brain decoding visual reality. So what happened to space? And then you look at time. Um, there is no time. There is only the illusion of time. There is only the perception of time. Well, no, there's a past and there's a present and there's a future. All right. I say there is only the now. One now in which all exists. But the way we decode information in that now, where we assemble it in here, makes us think that we're going through a process, a sequence of passing from past through present to future. So let's look at it. When you're thinking of the past, where are you? You're in the now. When you're thinking of the future, where are you? You're in the now. There is only the now. Everything else is illusion. Then, another question. Who's controlling this deal? It's a construct. It's been created by some form of intelligence. And who's who's controlling it? 
who, who, who is controlling that chatter in people's heads that, that never shuts up? I go into all this in great detail in the books and in the, the world tour. But scientific experiment has thrown up big questions about this thing we call free will and where are our thoughts coming from? For instance, um, they did an experiment whereby they were observing activity in the, the brains of the subject subjects and they asked them to randomly, when they chose, to move their hand. The activity in the brain to start the hand movement came a full half a second before the conscious decision to move the hand. Some later experiments were able to predict a action by someone 10 seconds before they decided to do it. As one scientist said, 10 seconds in terms of brain activity is a lifetime. So what's going on? These are the questions you, you, you never see um, or very rarely see um, addressed in the mainstream media, in education. Why? Because it's a perception deception to keep us ignorant of our reality and thus controlled by our reality and the perceptions that dictate our reality. And all that I'm talking about, this entire reality, all the things the way we decode it, is all operating only in a tiny, tiny frequency band we call visible light. That's all that we can, quote, see. And according to mainstream science, and I think they're underestimating it, um, in terms of um, the numbers, I think we can see actually less than they say. According to uh, mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005%, 0.005% of what exists in the universe, in energy and all the other forms. Visible light is a fraction of the 0.005%. And that is what we call our world. Here's a sobering thought. Political decisions the world over. Scientific orthodoxy. Medicine. Education. Media. All make their decisions, make their judgments. Communicate their opinions on the basis that this world is literally solid, is outside of us, and would still be here if we weren't. No, it wouldn't, because it only exists in the form we experience it in here. So when you think that decisions and opinions and certainties that dictate the reality of this world and the reality perceived by the vast overwhelming majority of the people is actually based on a complete fricking illusion of what we're actually experiencing. No wonder the world's a bloody madhouse. How could it not be? And the point is there is a force that which created this reality which doesn't want us to know the nature of the reality we're experiencing, so we continue generation after generation to be imprisoned by it. That's why you so rarely see any of this stuff discussed or highlighted in the mainstream. And I do hope that in 2017, more and more people start to look at this 
start to question, start to address these things about the nature of reality. Because this is the knowledge that will set us free of the program. Because it's knowledge beyond the program that unveils how the program works. And the world that we see is like a movie screen. When a movie's on the screen, it's a done deal. You ain't going to change the movie on the screen. It's already there, playing out. What you have to do is go and find the source from which the movie is coming. And then you will uh, be able to uh, change the movie. And where this reality is coming from is not in the seen. It's in the unseen. You know, that people dismiss, can't see it, can't exist. And therefore, the true source of human control is coming from the unseen. And the way that we remove that control and set us free by setting our perceptions free is by understanding 